we have dramatic news. Now, you remember Wolfpack, of course, trying to go to all the different states. 34 states is what we need. We need two thirds of the states to call for a convention, to get money out of politics. Okay, that's how we're going to get the amendment. We don't need Washington at all if we do it on the state level. I don't need any of those corrupt politicians, Republicans, Democrats. I don't need no political leader to save me. I don't care about 2016 and who's going to be our savior. No, no, we're our savior. So, of course, we were told all along it was impossible. Then all of a sudden, we put up Vermont on the board, which literally someone told us that was involved in Vermont politics was, quote, impossible, right? So all of a sudden, we had our brave little state of Vermont who stepped up to the plate, as they usually do, and they said, that's okay, you can't get a big state. And all of a sudden, we put California up on the board, and that was state number two. I believe that's a fairly large state. Now, we're on to the state of Illinois. I've told you a couple of things about them. Now, remember, we already had uh, the resolution calling for the convention pass in the Senate in Illinois. That was uh, 37 to 15, and uh, it was a great resolution put uh, forward by uh, Willie Delgado, who's a great senator, the leader of this fight there, was an American hero, I'll get to him in a second. Uh, and we'd gone through committee in the House, and we'd gone through a lot of struggles, and there was going to be a vote, we didn't think we had enough votes, we pulled it back, and then uh, we were supposed to have a vote right before the end of the year, and that vote just happened. I mean, you did hear the bugles, didn't it? Now wait, hold on now, hold on. The problem with this, uh, uh, Illinois is that in their Congress, in their legislature, you need two-thirds uh, to get a vote like this. I'm sorry, three-fifths to get a vote like this. So 60%. Now, that's, as you know from national politics, 60% is a really, really hard number to get, and the minority can block a lot of things. So in this case, you needed 71 votes in Illinois' House, right? There's only 71 Democrats. Every one of them has to show up. Every one of them has to agree, and every one of them has to vote yes. And then we'd like a Republican for a cushion, right? That would be terrific, and we'd reach out to a lot of Republicans. So did we get it? Boom, 72 to 40. By the skin of our teeth. But guess what? The third state to call for a convention. Here comes the great state of Illinois. We're going to Vermont, we're going to California, we're going to Illinois. Oh, wear me out, man. Let me say all 34 states on one show. <laughs> Look at that map. I remember when that map didn't have any shining states. Now we have three that are on the board. Let me tell you about the American heroes in this fight. Uh, first of all, the legislators. Okay, They're the ones who voted for it. In essence, we're calling these guys our new founding fathers because they are rescuing our democracy by getting money out of politics. Delgado in the Senate was unbelievable. It, it, our state leader talked to him. He actually listened to him. This is what democracy is supposed to be like. And he said, you know what? You make a good point. I'll go ahead and introduce that resolution. Who says that on the national level? Who hears out a constituent? Isn't that amazing? He was an absolute fighter and a hero and a champion for that. Now, Representative Linda Chapa-Levia was also fantastic in this fight. Uh, of course, uh, she led it and introduced it in the House. The Speaker of the House, Representative Michael Madigan, was a critical figure. Now, he is actually the longest serving speaker of any legislature in any state, and now that guy keeps his word, and that is very important, and he's one of the 21st century founding fathers as well. Also in the House, House Majority Leader uh, Barbara Curry, Representative Robert Martinwick, we'll hear from him in a second, then Representative Robert Pritchard, Assistant Majority Leader uh, Representative Art Turner Jr., Representative LaShawn Ford, the Judiciary Committee Chair Elaine Neckritz, and then the 45 representatives who co-sponsored SJR 42. Uh, this, is, this is how we do it, man. In every state, you've got to get brave, uh, heroic legislators who actually care about the citizens, who care about their constituents, who hear them out. They got call after call. You th what, do you, what do you think we were doing? <laughs> okay. I mean, we have been attacking the whole time. And so, whether it's people who are on our side, we enthusiastically support. Whether people who are, need to be convinced, we convince. People who are against us, well, everybody remembers Valancourt up in New Hampshire. Uh, you're going to have to remember him because he's no longer in office, right? So we do the whole range of activities here, and we unleash the wolf pack in Illinois. That's where they got the famous nickname, the Mountain Army. When one of the people working at a legislator office said, who is this Mountain Army you have? Another person in the legislator's office said, uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm getting all my constituents calling me. I, I've never seen this kind of calls, right? 
by the way, when we started in Illinois, a lobbyist, this is literally true, a lobbyist came up to one of our uh, workers, one of our volunteers, and said to him, oh, you're going to try to get this, it, with, with all this entrenched politicians in Illinois and the way things are done, you're going to come in and bring in a new resolution that's going to call for a, a convention to get an amendment to get money out of politics? He literally laughed in our face. Who's laughing now? Illinois is on the board. All right, now, let me go to those legislators who do such an amazing job here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Representative Curry that I told you about. Uh, initially, she was a little reluctant, but she's going to explain here why she switched over and decided to support it. So any effort to overturn Citizen United is one that I feel I must support. I would prefer the federal Congress to decide to offer an amendment through the states that would overturn Citizen United. They don't seem likely to do it at this point, but it is fair to say that in the past, many times when a, a proposal like this reaches a critical number of states supporting it, Congress wakes up, smells the coffee, and does the right thing. See, there's a growing recognition about state, from state legislators saying, hey, you know what? Congress ain't going to do it. If we don't push them super hard, they're just going to sit on their ass. They're not going to do a damn thing about it. It's time to start pushing. So now we go to Representative Chapa Lavia, who, again, was heroic in uh, shepherding this process through the House. Let's go to her. There exists over 700 state application on a variety of issues, including those from 49 states previously passing resolutions and 45 states with current applications. Only conventions called on the same issues are counted together, which is how we know that the convention scope will be limited to a single issue once convened. There, there have been over 233 state conventions to amend and adopt state constitutions with zero, once again, zero runaway conventions, which is just a conspiracy theory promoted by certain society. If you could take 10 applications on issue A, 20 applications on issue B, and four applications on issue C, count them together and call them a convention on those three issues, we would have, have already had a convention. Now, I love what she's saying there because she's putting down the conspiracy theories. Oh my God, you're going to get a runaway convention. They try to scare people that way. And she explains that that is not possible because of the facts that she explained there. No, it is for a specific purpose. We're going to get money out of politics. 95% of Americans agree with us. Yes, there's heroic work done by the Wolfpack volunteers, which I'm going to tell you about in a second, right? But it, it gets easier once it's introduced because it's hard for a legislator to say, I disagree with 95% of my constituents. So I'm glad she knocked down that conspiracy theory here. And then she makes another case here. So it has to stay within the scope. And please remember this. With the undoing of Citizens United, today, as we sit here, anybody from around the world could take a Linda Chapel Lavia or Joe Sisnowski or anybody and give you $2 billion and run you for President of the United States, and we wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Our politics and policy in this country is not for sale. Please allow us to have a voice at that convention. Not for sale. I love it. Love to hear actual legislators saying the same things we've all been saying together. And, and we've been shouting it from the rooftops now. They're beginning to as well. Let me go to Representative Martwick here. I don't think there are very many people in our country or even in this, in this body here today that would suggest that the ramifications of the Citizens United uh, decision has been healthy to our process. It has taken a government that was founded on the principles of by the people and for the people and then put it in the hands of secret money. Well, it's time to end that. And it was an excellent case he made about the problem. So what's the solution? Let's hear him out on that. I also find it fascinating that the framers of our Constitution in their infinite wisdom put this tool in for us to take advantage because they knew that future generations of Americans that they would have the confidence in them to do the right things just as they did the right thing when they put together the Constitution that we now so enjoy. You see, this process is in the Constitution and it's in there for a reason, because the Founding Fathers knew we would need it at some point. This is that point. Now let me tell you about the volunteers. These are also American heroes. One of the guys said, and I love these, they're real citizens, man. They're not, they're not lobbyists, they're not 
lawyers, they're not trained at this, they're not politicians, right? One guy said, hey, listen, I was tired of just getting drunk and doing nothing. <laughs> I thought, you know what, why don't I just do something with my life and try to get into the battle and see if we can make a difference? And it turns out he did. That guy made a ton of calls, convinced legislators, that's why we won. And he said at the end, I'm proud that I decided to sign up with Wolfback because this victory is the greatest thing I've ever been involved in in my life. And that's what you have to understand. A lot of people think, oh, it's hard work. Yeah, it, it is, no question. But when you win, nothing feels better. When we sent that Wolf t uh, Team 6 uh, up to New Hampshire to go get Valancourt, when we went there, sent them there to support our guys in Vermont and New Hampshire and we won, oh, that felt good. When you get legislators to change their mind, that feels phenomenal when you finally get the victory. You feel like you're part of change because you are. You don't need a magical man, whether it's Obama or anyone else. You actually can actually put your own walking boots on and make a difference. So along those lines, let me give you these volunteers. Our state leader uh, in Illinois is Richard Diesel Lake, and uh, he's also our membership outreach coordinator, and no one works harder. He's the guy that in the beginning he's like, well, if it's just me, it's just me. I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to start making phone calls. And he went down the list and called all of the senators in, in Illinois. And he's the one who got to Delgado and started talking to Delgado. And he convinced Delgado. And Delgado said, hey, Diesel, you're right. Let me introduce it. <laughs> but that could be you. <laughs> Diesel isn't some sort of political wonk or lobbyist or anything. He's just a guy who wanted to make a difference. He convinces a state senator, and off we go. And you know what happened? He gets a little bit of success. More people call, uh, join in. They start making calls. They get some success, we pass it in the Senate, more people join in, and now all of a sudden Diesel's got a mountain army. Okay, And these are the guys who did an unbelievable job in Illinois. He, here they are, the organizers, Susan Reed Singer, Derek Doc Daniels, he's also our bannerman in Chicago for TYT. I like their nicknames, right? you know me, I love that. Kit Cabello, and then Murray the Merciless Bowie, Matt Cotton, Vince Wordslayer Wallace, Sean Kimbrough, and W.L. Fort. Now here are the volunteers. Jerry Ryberg, Jamal Lawson, Kira Elliott, Tara Tanon, Maurice Randall, Osamudayan Okundaye, AKA Double O. <laughs> Jenny Wang, who is our TYT ambassador, also lives in Illinois, and uh, she joined in the calls. Elizabeth Lindquist, Andrew Sigmund, Peter Wolfrider, Kremidius. I think I said your last name wrong, but it sounds badass either way. All right, Allison Kruger, Stephanie Adams, Roger Hansen, Deborah Daniels, Kara Daniels, Ronnie Blood Oath Sandick. <laughs> this is your mountain army. Wait a minute, what is this? What is that last name on there? Jank Uger. <laughs> and the entire mountain army. Why am I on the list? Because I decided that I was going to uh, get in. We were so close. We had 67 votes that we knew for sure we were going to get, but we need 71. So the entire Wolfpack team from all across the country joined in on the calls, and so did I. And I got to tell you, the first time I started doing the calls, I got nervous. Isn't that funny? Because like, so it's perfectly normal. Everybody gets a little nervous. Like I'm about to call people in, in their house. I'm coming to their house. <laughs> but once you make a couple of calls, you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad. And here's a citizen talking to another citizen, uh, and and one of the people I talked to, she's like, oh. That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to support you. I put the phone down and I was like. <laughs> oh, it feels so good, man. So do something good for yourself. Join this effort, man. I can't wait to read your name in the next state that we get, okay? Because we're going to keep on going. Here, let me show you a picture, by the way, from uh, the day that they celebrated the victory. Just a couple of the guys out there, uh, and Diesel's over there on the right. A bunch of the guys who've been working super hard in Wolfpack, Illinois. They got it done. Do they look like lobbyists to you? They're not lobbyists. <laughs> okay, they're regular guys just like you. And by the way, what are you doing? You're just picking up the phone, right? It's, it, a lot of people fight for freedom and democracy. There were people willing to lay their lives down in the civil rights movement. They had hot coffee thrown in their face when they were doing the sit-ins in the diners. And they had the KKK waiting outside for them when they stepped out of the diners. Okay, well, you can't make a couple of phone calls? Wolf-Pack.com, man. Let them know we're coming. Wolf-Pack.com. I'm going to tell you how you're going to get involved in wolf pack attacks in one second, but I want to give you the honorable mentions as well. Larry Lessig, professor at Harvard Law School, who is godfather of the movement, 
said, oh, you need me to stop everything I'm doing, go and testify in Illinois, done. Came in, testified, left three hours later, uh, spent uh, you know, a considerable amount of time, money, resources to make sure that he stood up and he talked to the legislators and got it done. Esther, the godmother lake, that's Diesel's mom. Uh, if people needed food and shelter, they go to the godmother and she would take care of them. <laughs> Man, look, you got an army, somebody's got to feed them, right? And we got to stick together. So they literally would go to Diesel's house and his mom would cook for him. And then we had Maryland Senator Jamie Raskin. Uh, who is a great fighter all across the country for this, and he called one of the legislators. He said, oh, you need help in Illinois? I know that guy. I can make that call. How great is that? He calls the legislator. He says, you, you got you to see it our way here. He explains the case. The guy says, you're right. Democracy! Democracy! It feels fantastic. And then Jenny Franklin was a really important uh, legislative aide to Representative Chapa Livia, and those are the people who get things done and uh, she helped to make this happen. And finally, I want to tell you how you can get involved. Okay, if you want to do these wolf pack attacks that we do, that I was involved in, that I made the calls from, ooh, you're going to love it, okay? It's wolfattack at wolf-pack.com. Wolfattack at wolf-pack.com. And, you know, sometimes it just takes an hour. You call a bunch of citizens, you talk to them. It's not that hard. At the end of the day, you're like, okay, I didn't go to war or anything. I made an hour worth of phone calls. And it made a difference. My dad saw me doing it. He's like, get me a list for New Jersey. <laughs> I was like, there you go. That's the attitude. So here we go. They said it couldn't be done. Looks like we're in the middle of doing it. Why don't you join us? Have a little bit of fun. And you could turn around and tell people, and this is absolutely true if we get the amendment, that you helped save our government. Isn't that amazing? We're in the middle of doing it. Knock, knock, who's there? Wolf-pack.com.